my life, I have been breaking through negative situations and changing them to positive events. My discussion tonight is about negative space painting. Because you see, I'm an artist, retired high school counselor, and I've been working on the road for the past seven years. My art is bold and exciting. So it's not designed to match your furniture, but you can put it on layaway. Next. I wanted to know if you have a dime. Does anyone here have a dime? I'm not taking up a collection. What I'm trying to get you to see is, if you have a dime, you have a piece of black artwork done by Dr. Selma Burke from North Carolina. She did uh, President Roosevelt's head in 1945, and she studied in Europe, taught at Harvard University. And then the other famous people are Dr. Martin Luther King, Booker T. Washington, and George Washington Carver. And these are all on coins. So if someone asks you, do you have any black art and you have a dime, you have to say yes. Uh, next picture. This is uh, my first painting. It's called Kansas, the Ellis Island for the Black Pioneers. And negative space painting is when you paint the canvas black first, and then you paint in the background, which helps the images pop forward into positive space. So the positive thing about this uh, research for this painting was, I didn't know Kansas was the promised land. The negative is a lot of our students don't know this history. So we're starting with the panels. On the end, there's the old man with his head down. That's the past. The next is the young couple and the warrior. That's the future. As we move forward, we can see these are teenagers, not the teenagers we have today. These teenagers, you tell them what to do, and they did it. Next is a family, <laughs> and you can see the baby is the only one that's actually engaged with the audience. The baby is looking at you. Everyone else is looking away. Dad has his hand on the dog's head. This was the ADT system, the alarm system, let you know somebody's coming. Next is grandmother, and she is combing the granddaughter's hair. This is a daily ritual. You always look your best, no matter where you're going, but she also carries the oral history. And on the end, there are two children. Uh, the little girl is carrying a prairie orchid, which grows in this part. They're all going to the promised land. These people are called exodusters. They were led by Pap Singleton uh, to Nicodemus, Kansas, which was founded in 1877. Next. This is called Sleeping on Promised Land. The negative thing about this artwork is, this title, is that they're sleeping on the ground. But the positive thing is they can own this land. So there were two migrations. One came to Kansas, the next came to Oklahoma. There was uh, 137,000 blacks that went to the state of Oklahoma. They formed 50 all-black towns. And Boley, Oklahoma is one that I've been doing research on for the last 12 years, and it's also my birthplace. Next. Uh, research is um, vital when you're doing this type of art because we want our art to not only attract your attention, but for you to have a story. So in working on the black pioneers, I uh, read books like The Black West by William Katz, uh, Acres of Aspiration, listen to those titles, Journey Toward Hope. But then when I watched my favorite movies, which was um, Gunsmoke, Wagon Train, <laughs> Rawhide, I very seldom saw black actors until it came to the Daniel Boone show. And in those episodes, a lot of times, the black characters had major roles. So I said, oh, I'm a part of history. So I was working with some students at Wichita State University, a TRIO program. And of course, students always get it first. You know, they get it before you do. And because they know everything about technology, but the Black West is still a new frontier. This is talking, this is from uh, Dr. Poussant. He discusses shattered self-confidence uh, concept, sorry. And what that means is you're working with self-esteem. And if you have good self-esteem, and everybody wants to have good self-esteem, you have high energy, you work hard, and you smile a lot. If you have bad self-esteem, you complain, you're sad, you get depressed, and sometimes you get into trouble. So the connection between self-esteem and history 
is vital because without knowing your history, you cannot complete your identity and know who you are. Next. This is uh, Brown versus the Board of Education. This was an anniversary piece. Um, that was in 1954, and so the 50-year anniversary was last year. Starting from uh, the mother kissing her son, he's getting ready to go to school, and the ritual is you always get new clothes for school. The little boy is holding a peppermint with the dreams of what's going to happen at school. Then we get to the bus ride. Now, that's a whole education in itself. You can see the balloons flying out the windows. There's also uh, some diploma caps. Next, we have graduation and working in a school setting as an art teacher. Uh, my first barrier was I just decided I was not going to accept any more C work because generally when students get, ha, get receive a C, they just throw it away. So when I called them to my desk on grading day, one at a time, I said, your grade is a C. But if you want to earn a B, you could take it back over there and work on it. And they go, okay, okay, okay. And then they run over there and they work some more. And of course, when they came back, I said, now you're at a B. If you want an A, you can take it back over there and work on it some more. And they'd go, okay, okay, okay. So they could go from a C to an A in my classroom. And what that taught me was I had to change my lesson plans. I had to put in a midpoint grade. That way the students had some control if they worked harder they could earn a better grade. And a lot of my students won awards, so I did, wasn't just running them around the corner, okay? <laughs> I met one of my students last summer, um, and I had had her 30 years ago, and she told me she still had her assignments from my class. <laughs> now, with moving from an art teacher to a high school counselor, there's a lot of personalities. And you know, the negative thing about being in high school, you don't know who you are. You think you might be like your friend or your family. You're really confused about it. So there's a test by Myers and Briggs called True Color Test. And those four different colors, goals are the ones that pay their bills on time. They are very organized. They're the backbone of this country. The blues are the people that want everyone to get along. They're kind of the caretakers. They cry at movies. The greens are the ones who are the inventors engineers they're kind of seen as being by themselves they probably invented your cell phone and then you have the oranges and those are the wild children who are competitive a lot of fun but high risk and high management so how do you get all of these personalities together in order to have a group activity that's successful so we started a modeling club open membership to the school didn't charge any dues call the local merchants and so they could loan us clothes, call the newspaper, did our own advertisement, ask the students, we're not going to write a script, just turn the music up loud. We had over 300 students in two years out of a population of 16. So you see, students want to have something to do. So the positive was the modeling club. The negative was when students don't have anything to do but talk about each other's business and get into fights, that's a problem. Next. This is called City Girl and Country Boy. And uh, this is on skills. Skills. Sometimes teachers make assumptions that just because students aren't dressed a certain way that they're not smart. And so the girl is all dressed up in her hat and her fancy shoes. And the boy has on a pair of overalls. But when they get on the dance floor, they speak the same language because if you can dance, you can dance. And so <laughs> the negative is makes teachers not accepting students as they come. The positive is if you have an activity where students can build a float or help decorate a stage set, they start to see strengths in each other. Then you put in the combination of the different colors and you surprise who thinks like who. So that gives you a whole new Frame of reference. Next. Uh, since I've been retired, this, I've been working on my legacy. You know, as you get older, you start to see some of your mistakes. You can't remember all of them. <laughs> Stepping over my history, I never wanted to hear my past. Thought it didn't matter. Hope the present would last. And now I know the tragedy and why I feel so sad 
It's because I've wasted my time, talents, and gifts that I never knew I had because nobody told me so I didn't know that the heroes who had a purpose in life were the people I was searching for. John Brown of Kansas, the Mennonites, the Quakers, the black pioneers, my family, and District 1. And I said District 1 because I have to beg everybody to get something done. But anyway, this is called Art That Touches Your Heart. We do this program, uh, one day show, open to the public, with local uh, art teachers get involved, the art students, local artists from um, Wichita, Kansas City, and Missouri. And my mentor, Frank Frazier, comes up from Dallas, Texas, and he brings nationally known artists. We want students to see what quality is. If you expect quality, students will give you quality. So this is called Art That Touches Your Heart. Wichita State University has hosted it for the past three years. Our goals are to get the art out of the classroom into the community, reward excellence in education, and acknowledge those organizations that have consistently supported the arts. You know, the Kennedy Foundation and uh, Kennedy Center in D.C. says that the arts increase cognitive skills so that students receive better grades. This year, instead of giving certificates, we gave portraits of our honorees. And the difference between that photograph and that portrait is the portrait comes alive. So my mentor, Frank Frazier, that's his work on the end. And uh, he does his work with black shoe polish. Can you guess why? Because at one time, black men could only make a living polishing shoes. Now we're ready for our singers. The little cousins are coming up. And while they're coming up, we're going to tell you what we do about negative and positive. If we have students in school who are loud, we form a drill team. If we have students who feel like they're not included in the homecoming parade, we build a float. And my best friend said if I charge one more school bus on my credit card, she was going to break my arm. We're going to take a bow. We're going to take a bow. Come until we take a bow, okay? okay. We're going to take a bow with them, okay? Take a bow. Yeah, we have to take a bow. Okay. <laughs> the negative is you didn't know them, and the positive is you won't forget them because you've just helped them with their self-esteem. <laughs> 